There he is. Oh. See? Oh my god. There he is. So close to the boat. There he is. No, uh, he's gonna pop up again. Hey, buddy. Oh. So cute. We're anchored by the village here in the Sea of Cortez, along with our buddy boat, sailing vessel Small World, happily anticipating the arrival of more friends very soon. It's a beautiful morning, and we've got pretty nice views in every direction. There's Alegria. The crew is joining and growing. The main reason we've come to the village is to load up on fresh produce. It's the only spot in the Northern Sea of Cortez where that is possible. And we've been cruising for a month, so we're pretty low on provisions right now. Hey guys! This is town. Well, this is like quicksand, and we're still out of shape, so. Yeah, I don't know what my deal is. My boobs have been hurting lately. We're just like, F it, through some, uh, <laughs> through, an anchor out. through the anchor out, and I think it's a pretty safe town. Yeah. Um, well, what we hear. If so. they can move it, they could have it. <laughs> yeah, if they can move it, they can have it. <laughs> Good point. Our friends are over here. We're going to the market. It is hot and humid today. So really glad we left when we did. Before we provision, we're getting tacos at a local spot famous for its food. We're going to be hot anyway, so we might as well enjoy a tasty meal first. Cerveza before 10 a.m. Necessary on such a hot day. Mike's with me. I'm not the only one. This was your fault, Chris. You started it. <laughs> it was your idea. I went into the fridge to keep cold, and that's how the whole thing started. Lazy man film right here. I am so hot, I'm not moving anymore. Back at Calico, I'm sweaty, but quite happy with my haul. So we ended up with a lot of veggies. They even had little cherry tomatoes, mushrooms, which I haven't had in probably a month and a lot of different herbs and stuff. So he threw in some radishes too. <laughs> when we provision, the work really starts back at the boat, cleaning veggies and squirreling them away into various spots. Using my disinfectant and then I also use vinegar. Um, sometimes I just use the vinegar depending on what it is. They threw in some beans for free. I thought this asparagus looked really good. A bit of time. So after yesterday's little outboard overheating fun. Thank God you got us in. A little scary. Seems to run fine, but it is definitely hot. Um, so I had to rebuild kit. The new impeller. I just did this last summer, so I'm not gonna film the whole thing. I don't know how we have to do it twice in one year. I've had this outboard for like 10 years and never had to do it before the last year. So 
Maybe it's the desert, maybe the sand reading, um, but I just lifted it off the dinghy, put it on deck, and I'm gonna go tear into it and see if I can fix it. Hopefully it's just an impeller and something simple, but only one way to find out. So the impeller was good. Uh, so Mike on Allegria has helped me. He has much more space to work back here in this nice center cockpit boat. Um, so we're just working on this right now. Since we had good water flow, we suspect the thermostat the water was able to come through the check. But this could be an issue. This was definitely getting hot. Get that thing out. Yeah, never steps out. Yeah, we could test this thing and see how it is if you want. Yeah, it might be cool. I don't think it's moved. I mean, by 180, surely it's that's got to be opening, right? She's stuck. That's it. No, it didn't change. Nothing's changing. That's where the water should be exiting. Yeah, this this should be opening up. I think it should actually be retracting and opening the port. Right. And letting water flow into the engine. Okay, so it's at almost 200 now. Yeah, the water's boiling. Which means your engine is like... Cooked. Is cooking. Because we're cooking the engine, which we've done twice now. So if we put it back in this cold water, just to make sure we're not missing something here. Cold water is, yeah, all the way down to... We say cold. And <laughs> <laughs> see a Cortez cold. <laughs> I don't think it's gonna move. Nah, nothing's happening. It didn't. Okay, so we just ran uh, the engine about a thermostat and it still got hot. So now we know we have water from the lower unit and the impeller up to the thermostat. We saw it flowing out the thermostat. So now we're switched up like the water jacket, which is where when a thermostat is open, the water would bypass into the actual engine block. Um, so we're gonna take the water jacket off because we're still overheating. The motor cannot be run the way it is. So it's a pain in the butt to do out here, but we're gonna do it anyway. There's 12. 10 millimeter bolts here and they are numbered in order that we retorque them I'm just gonna go ahead and break them loose in the order that they are numbered so I guess that makes sense yeah so this is number one seized yeah, I don't think so. okay hold on water jacket covers coming off uh, it looks a little caked up it looks a little caked up Clearing all the capillaries. Yeah. Hopefully. All the cooling line. Definitely a lot of mud coming out. I think these ones that are horizontal, or at least the wider rectangular ones, are the intakes, and then all these different returns, the small holes. And those are the ones that have some mud coming out, so. Definitely possible. Watch your face. Well, we wrapped up that motor late last night, uh, so we didn't kind of finish filming. I did run into the beach and it seemed like it wasn't smoking, or steaming rather, um, but I'm gonna go run it during the day so I could see. Uh, can't believe how much mud and stuff is in that water jacket. Uh, very interesting. Definitely the furthest I've ever taken apart the cooling system of an outboard. Uh, I'm gonna go fire up and see what happens if I run the speed now. So far, decent water. Let's uh, take her for a run up the speed and see what's up. I just ran a full throttle, not steaming. Seems like this water is not getting that hot too. Like this is burning touch earlier. Uh, I think so far so good. It's running at the hard. I'd say it's pretty good. I just ran a full throttle. Oh yeah. Uh, nothing steamed out. The water out of the, the telltale or the weep hole uh, isn't hot. It was burning hot earlier. So oh God. I think, so uh, I think Mike and I got it. Nice work. Thermostat back in, or what are you thinking? I think it's gonna leave it out. I mean, I just don't want to mess with it if it's working right now. 
Yeah, I was going to suggest uh, if you feel like it's working okay, then just roll with it and maybe um, just order a new one when you get back to the States and uh, maybe put a maybe put a fresh new one in. Yeah, and also like a fresh gasket, because my luck now is I'd open up the, the thermostat cover and rip the, rip the gasket or something, you know? another beautiful morning. We are thinking about maybe taking a little jump ski over to the next island. It's about 20 miles, but there's a stop we can make in between if we want. The only thing is we've heard it has a lot of bees. Um, well, there's that problem and there's also the fact that the wind is blowing, let's see here, 12, 13 knots right now in the wrong direction. Um, but the wind is just so fickle here. Like it comes and it goes. It's you can't rely on the forecast. So um, We're just kind of You know watching things and seeing if there's any kind of break where we might just like go for it um, but I wanted to show you guys something That's why I came on here really um, So yesterday on the beach I found something that I think is amazing and I'm gonna go get it this. I put it in um, paper towel and a Tupperware because it was starting to break the other night when we had rough winds, but when I first saw this, I was like, oh, it, it looks kind of like a Nautilus. So let me get the focus right. Um, but see these grooves, these sharp little grooves on the back? That doesn't look like a Nautilus, but I did some research and um, it's actually called a paper nautilus and it's not a true nautilus um, it's actually in the cephalopod family so like octopus squid and it's what um, this particular type of little octopus creates for their babies um, for the eggs and they're pretty rare to find whole because they're so paper thin um, and I already had a little breakage there right there um, but I'm gonna try to preserve it now with a little Tupperware because I've never found anything like that. Um, and yeah, I've been doing a little bit more collecting than I should be doing. Um, found this guy yesterday. This beach is really amazing because it's got the most variety of rocks. I think in a beach that I've ever come across um, so my rock collection is getting impacted by that um, and there are also a lot of cool shells it's a bird there's so many birds the boobies the uh, pelicans are just going crazy um, which I love <laughs> I love feeling like I'm in a safari or a zoo and the animals are all around me just doing their thing um, we can get a break in this wind, then I think we're gonna go for it, so TBD. As the day goes on, the wind continues to build, so we stay put. Building. Well, last night was an experience we don't want to repeat anytime soon. <laughs> so we are moving on today. They call this place the funnel, and I think it's something with how the mountains, the air moves over the mountains. So if we move like 30 miles away, it should be much calmer. So we're gonna do that while these westerlies pass. And our friends on sailing vessel Alegria are coming with us. Um, they were our friends in the boatyard, Mike and Katie, and I think Small World's coming too. I don't know if they're quite ready yet, but they'll be joining. And it is a beautiful morning. Very still, a little bit hot, but pleasant. And there was a light breeze 
like 10 minutes ago that's now dead but we're really hoping when we get out um there's a little more wind and the direction that we think it's going to be means that we might be able to fly our code zero so we'll see Engine is off. We're going half an hour. Mike and Allegri is a stubborn bastard, so I'm gonna try to sail with them. <laughs> that is some peaceful sailing right there. We are moving two knots in 4.6 knots of breeze. <laughs> and astute viewers might notice that our wind instrument is wrong. <laughs> it's basically backwards. Um, or something. Or something. <laughs> Something I'm really miscalibrated. Yeah. Well, Mike has wind ahead. A little bit. Yeah, not much. Like wind. we're seeing 0 0.10. So hot. We just like haven't gotten to sail that much. Um, it might be a wind line right there. You see like the water? Mm -hmm. Yep. And motor there. Yeah, we could motor there in this heat. Why not? <laughs> Most exciting tack ever. So we're going back the other way now. Yep, watch your little feet. The things we do to be able to sail. It's getting frustrating. Yeah. I think I could head up a little bit tighter. Allegria threw a tack in. Uh oh. I'm on poor tack. I'm gonna have to give him away. Maybe I'll tack on top of him if I can. Breeze. Yeah, this is frustrating. That's a breeze. Oh, there's smoke at me. Finally. Feels good. Out of the, we're only in 10 feet of water, so start reversing and away.
that was an amazing dive. Just getting cold, getting my temperature down was pretty phenomenal. Um, it was actually kind of turned up, so the clarity wasn't the best, but there was a lot of fish. And now we're back at the boat, and I didn't film this this morning, but there's been a lot of bee invaders in this anchorage, and also it's been very rolly. So the last two or three nights I haven't slept much because there's been all different things, like different phenomenons every night. It's like wind or rolling or flies. Um, so the bees are oh no. Oh shit. Oh, did you get that one? Yeah, so. I think my feet today. Yeah, Bill's already been. There's one right behind you. Great. Pushed it in the way. So, the thing about these bees is that. Now they're all over our sink. Normally, killing a bee is not something I would ever do. But with these bees, if you don't send a message, you'll get a swarm. And we've tried lighting incense, which sometimes seems to work. Usually, they'll send like two or three little scouts and. Um, Last year we tried giving them water, but then you just have a swarm of bees at your boat, so. I don't know, I've been stung more times than I want to be already, and the quail's not working. We feel bad, but um, when we get these little scout bees, we kill them. Um, and usually that they won't they don't come when you do that um but it depends on the anchorage and this one's been a little intense how's it going generally good how are you guys we are good katie's uh cooking up some uh pasta and veggies uh for the potluck how's your foot Oh, it's better, thank you. Yeah, it was uh, an annoying place to get a sting. I actually had a little nap and I feel a little better now. That's good to hear, yeah. Actually, Jojo got stung in the foot when we were up at the cabana, so you guys could be uh, foot sting buddies. Jeez. Pretty evening. Yeah, we're heading to the beach for a potluck, cruiser's potluck. Yeah, and our friends. Like friend. the Bahamas all over again. Yeah. We got new friends, Crystal and Craig, which you guys know, and um, Mike and Katie from Alegria. Yep. And we made a hook loin. I'm gonna chop that up. The beach in this spot is really cool because there's like an abandoned, like there's these abandoned like little hut things that have tables and stuff inside. So it's really nice for uh, exactly what we're gonna be doing this evening. Um, it's just a long sandy beach, long white sand beach. It's not always easy street in this life, but nights like this make it all worth it. <laughs> 